we are seeing a revolution of the financial system. And so it's a time of new risks, but also lots of new opportunities uh, for policymakers and ultimately for IMF staff. Welcome to the fifth and final episode of Fintech Forward, the special IMF podcast series that focuses on financial technology and draws from the expertise of the IMF Monetary and Capital Markets Department. Today, we will focus on fintech work in the IMF's Financial Stability Assessment Program, also called FSAP. My name is Tara Ayer, and I'm an economist in the Monetary and Capital Markets Department. This episode features May Kamis, Deputy Director of the IMF's Monetary and Capital Markets Department. May heads the work on FSAP. Thank you so much, Tara, for having me today. I'm very pleased to have the opportunity to talk a bit about the FSAP or the Financial Sector Assessment Program, which started at the fund in the early 2000s. And uh, just to add that I, I was there in the early uh, part of my career back then, and I was also responsible and worked on the initiation of the FSAP uh, program in the fund back then. So for me, this is a full circle and happy to be able to sit here and talk about it a little bit. Me, uh, could you please tell us a little bit more about the work that you do? So the FSAP, as the name implies, uh, provides a comprehensive assessment of potential risks to financial stability. And it's generally based on three pillars. The first one is systemic risk assessment. The second pillar is the assessment of the oversight framework. And the third pillar basically evaluates safety nets. So maybe I could expand a little bit to tell you about these pillars uh, in brief. Uh, so the systemic risk pillar, under that pillar, the FSAP team runs stress tests and the objective is to gauge the ability of financial institutions to withstand severe adverse macroeconomic shocks. So that's pillar one, which focuses on risk. Pillar two focuses, as I said, on the oversight framework and the Objective of that assessment is to evaluate the strength of both the supervisory and regulatory frameworks to mitigate risks. Finally, under the safety nets pillar, we assess the adequacy of crisis management tools and other safety nets, for example, deposit insurance, to handle adverse events that may materialize. So... After all these analyses is done uh, and based on the results of the analysis, the FSAP provides concrete recommendations for country authorities. Uh, our evaluation is that if these recommendations are adopted, it could make the financial system more resilient. So just wanted, before I finish on, on the FSAP, just wanted to highlight that while FSAPs in advanced economies are conducted by the IMF teams alone, uh, we actually partnered with the World Bank in conducting uh, FSAPs jointly uh, in developing and emerging market economies. Thank you so much, May. That makes a lot of sense and really helps us understand what the FSAP is. Um, just sort of building on that, could you uh, please tell us a little bit more about fintech, uh, sort of in context from the IMF FSAP and why it's relevant to us at the IMF uh, in terms of FSAPs? Sure, of course. So fintech, as we all know, has drawn significant attention in recent years. But uh, what we mean when we refer to it may still be ambiguous to many people. So maybe I should start by citing the Financial Stability Board's definition of fintech. And it's a bit complicated, but let me try to do it. The, um, the Financial Stability Board defines fintech as technology-enabled innovation in financial services that could result in new business models, applications, processes, or products. The important part is that they focus on those models, applications, processes, and products that have an associated material effect on the provision of financial services. So the final part of the definition, which is the material effect on the provision of financial services, is helpful from an FSA perspective because it focuses on systemic implications and including financial stability implications. 
So maybe I could be a bit more concrete in giving examples of what fintech means. I just wanted to highlight first that we need to realize that fintech could be provided by either existing financial institutions or new startups. And uh, even central banks' digital currency products could be considered fintech, depending on their design. Uh, but most notably, large global technology firms, or what we call big tech, like Apple, Google, Meta, have also become very active in financial services. And they leverage large existing consumer bases. And that is associated, of course, of data, and in addition to the technology that they have to offer innovative financial services. So I hope I provided a bit more context to what we mean by fintech. Now, why is fintech relevant for FSAPs? Uh, as I mentioned earlier, systemic risk is the main focus of FSAPs. And while fintech may introduce a lot of benefits, we know that it could also introduce significant risks and therefore should be covered in FSAPs as we see these risks to be relevant. So um, how do we start by deciding whether we cover fintech or not in FSAPs? We need to know how fintech impacts the financial ecosystem. And from there, we can determine how do we cover it, whether we cover it in the FSAPs and how we cover it in FSAPs. Uh, for example, under which pillar and what issues uh, we should be exploring. So, you know, examples include covering fintech's interconnectedness with the existing financial ecosystem that will be covered under pillar uh, one, which is systemic risks. Uh, the other option or depending, you know, depending on what's relevant, uh, we can cover under pillar two, which is the oversight framework the extent of the coverage of fintech in uh, the FSAP country we're studying within the regulatory framework. So I um, initially mentioned that the World Bank is also a partner with us in some of the FSAP work in developing and emerging economies. Just wanted to say that their coverage of fintech focuses on uh, financial inclusion and developmental aspects, while our coverage is more focused on systemic risk. Thank you so much, May. So what are some recent FSAPs that have analyzed the fintech landscape um, and wondering what their policy recommendations are? Thanks for that question. Actually, um, as you know, fintech is an emerging topic in the work of the fund, but FSAPs are starting to cover it. We face issues in terms of scarce data and the fact that international standards are still evolving. Uh, however, we have been covering fintech issues in several recent FSAPs, and uh, maybe I can give you examples. Uh, more recently, we had the Germany and Ireland FSAPs, and uh, both FSAPs reviewed the authorities' regulatory and supervisory approach to fintech, so that's pillar two. Uh, and it also explored whether adequate data was available to monitor risks in the sector. The UK FSAP, uh, which was concluded uh, earlier this year, uh, looked at risks and trends in digital money. And uh, the note that covers this topic is on our website if people are interested in looking at it. Uh, more recently, the Sweden FSAP has explored the financial stability implications from the introduction of central bank digital currency as the Riksbank, which is the central bank of Sweden, has been exploring the e-krona issuance. And lastly, we have ongoing currently the Mexico FSAP, which is joint with the World Bank, and it is exploring a range of fintech-related uh, topics. Uh, so it's, it's actually a larger range than the other FSAPs, and it includes authorities' overall financial innovation strategy, central bank digital currency, etc. I hope this is helpful. Yeah, that's super helpful, very comprehensive. Uh, it looks like, you know, we've started doing some significant work in FSAPs. Mm. Um, so, uh, so May, would you have any closing thoughts? And uh, in your opinion, what would be the direction for future work on fintech in FSAPs? 
Yes, in closing, I just wanted to reiterate and emphasize that the fund's work on fintech will continue to evolve. For the FSAP program, we plan to continue to expand fintech coverage in FSAPs. For example, for the current fiscal year, we are planning to include fintech coverage in at least four FSAPs, and that would be a minimum for us. Hopefully, we'll be able to cover more. And this work, uh, you know, from our perspective, will be especially relevant in cases where authorities have already introduced regulations, are considering draft regulations, or are experimenting with fintech initiatives. We we find that the authorities find uh, that our comments and recommendations are helpful at these uh, stages. Wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing your time and your thoughts on this. This has been very interesting. Thank you, Tara. That was Tara Iyer speaking with May Camis, Deputy Director in the Monetary and Capital Markets Department, in the fifth and final episode of this special five-part series that focuses on financial technology. Look for the other FinTech Forward episodes, as well as all the other IMF podcasts on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen. You can also follow us on Twitter at IMF underscore podcast. I'm Bruce Edwards. Thanks for listening.